Once upon a time, in a little village in France, there lived a woman by the name of Mademoiselle Aurélie. She lived alone on her farm and was quite satisfied about it. You see, she was the kind of person who cared more about being practical than frolicking in fancy frills. Valise, tie up your skirt. It'll hinder your work. But, mademoiselle, it's so pretty that I simply had to show it off. Ugh. Yes, Mademoiselle Aurélie would only dress in tightly strapped gumboots, a navy overcoat, and a hat to keep out the sun. Mademoiselle didn't believe in love either. She had never thought of marrying, and at the age of 20, she had promptly declined a proposal which, at the age of 50, she did not yet regret. She really is quite alone in the world. Not really. She has all the fowls, a few cows, and a couple of mules to keep her company. Oh, shush. You really are a naughty girl. One day, Mademoiselle found herself in a rather strange situation. Her neighbor, a young woman named Odile, appeared in her gallery, surrounded by her four little children. Dear Mademoiselle, I've got to go to my mother. She's very ill, and I can't take the kids with me. And my husband is also out of town. Would you mind looking after them for a couple of weeks? Uh, no way. Why would I want kids running through my house? Oh, Mademoiselle Orly, please. Please keep them for me till I come back. I wouldn't bother you with them if there was any other way to do it. Please, please, please. Poor Odile's rambling only drove Orly crazy. And so, in the end, she hurriedly decided to keep the children. Oh, fine. Mademoiselle Orly, thank you so much. And off she went, away in a mule cart. Mademoiselle looked at the children and wondered. Oh, how tough could children be? And it is only a matter of a few days anyway. But that's where Mademoiselle was wrong. She thought if she fed the children well, they would just sleep and that would be it. But it wasn't. Mademoiselle! Mademoiselle! I want strawberry jam! Well, I don't have any, so you just gotta do whatever there is. Now don't make a fuss and eat. I don't! Uh-oh, Mademoiselle, Elodie won't sleep if she doesn't get her jam, you know. If she doesn't sleep, she's gonna cry. Cry? For just a silly bit of jam? <sighs> oh, dear. Mademoiselle Aurélie had a terrible time looking after the children. After all, how was she to know that Marclette always wept when spoken to in a loud and commanding tone of voice. <laughs> oh dear! The next day, it looked like Mademoiselle Orly had become acquainted with Tinom's passion for flowers. But that was until he had plucked all the best lilies and pinks from the garden and utterly ruined it. Yeah, he is the naughtiest of us. Oh, dear. Poor Mademoiselle felt helpless and cried out her worries to Ruby. I tell you, Ruby, this is not my cup of tea. Oh, Mademoiselle, don't, don't be so hard on yourself. Tell you what, there are things you got to know in the raising and management of children, and one of them is loving them as your own. Mademoiselle was a bit startled by this. Love? She hadn't ever loved anything in her life. Maybe the farm she lived on, but that was it. And so she wandered around in a daze. Thinking about Ruby's words, Elodie came up to her. Ma'am! Ma'am! This is for you! Eh? For me? What do I, uh, do with this? <laughs> you put it on your head. 
Hmm. Uh, now what? Wow! Mademoiselle Arnelie looks really pretty. <laughs> Mademoiselle was very startled at what little Elodie had said. She started to feel something warm and tingling deep inside her chest. Hmm. That's new. And so the days went by, and soon Mademoiselle started to learn that having children around wasn't that difficult. She eventually understood their habits and tricks. Mademoiselle, I don't think I can eat the greens. I'm, I'm too full. Oh, well then I guess you won't be eating the huge chocolate cake I baked today, huh? <laughs> Things changed dramatically around the house. Mademoiselle wore snow white aprons in the kitchen, a thing she had never had the use of. Now, little Ilo, your sticky little hands aren't going to dirty up my skirt anymore. <laughs> that night, however, Mademoiselle startled herself. Good night, dear. As she looked at the sleeping children, she passed over Elodie's bed. Elodie, dear, are you asleep? Elodie replied through her quiet breathing. Suddenly, Mademoiselle Aurélie was so taken by her feelings that she quietly kissed the top of Elodie's head and hurriedly exited the room. The next morning, all the children trooped into the dining room, yawning widely. Only Elodie seemed to be in a sunny mood. My, Elodie, did you have a good sleep? Very, and before I slept, Mademoiselle came to me and kissed me. What? I thought you'd be sleeping. My, my, Mademoiselle, so you really did give her a kiss, huh? Thank you, Mademoiselle. Everyone was pleasantly startled at this. Mademoiselle, however, was too embarrassed to say anything. But under her stern face, she was quite happy. And thus, at the end of two weeks, Mademoiselle Aurélie had grown quite used to the kids. And she no longer complained. It was one such afternoon she was sitting outside, looking out, when she suddenly saw a mule cart coming up the path. Mm -hmm. Who's that? Seems familiar. Oh, why, it's Odile! Yo ho, Mademoiselle, I'm back. Where are my naughty kids? Oh dear, where are they? Dinom's uh, on the ladder, Marlette and Marlene are in the stables, and Elodie. Uh, where's Elodie? Oh! <laughs> You're right here. As Aurélie called the children, they all came and hugged their mother with much joy. Waving goodbye to Mademoiselle, they walked away to their own home. Eh, <sighs> was the house always so quiet? Mademoiselle looked around her empty house. She had gotten so used to the thundering of feet, the sudden bursts of laughter and squabbling, and all of that now replaced by the sudden silence, startled her dreadfully. This feels too strange. I better go and make myself a cup of tea. She drifted into the kitchen in a very dazed fashion. With trembling hands, she put the pan on the stove and, quite suddenly, she started crying. And wow, she cried. She howled and wailed terribly. Mademoiselle, what's wrong? <laughs> the children, <laughs> they're gone. <laughs> oh, Mademoiselle, you are missing them already. Well, don't you worry about that. I'm sure you made those children very happy here. Ruby comforted the sad Mademoiselle, and soon she was sitting with a nice cup of tea feeling much better. I know you're missing the kids, but Tinom too? Such a troublemaker. 
<laughs> but he was a very kind heart, Ruby. I saw that when he went to care for the little chickens. Hmm? What about the twins? Oh, they are so cute. I still have a poem written by the two of them. Well, there is no use asking about little Elo. She had your heart. Oh, she still does. You know, Ruby, love has a lot more to it than I know. Those children were... They were little joys. And it was not just the old mademoiselle. The children loved her too much to have left her and were at her place almost every day. She in turn visited Odile's place and soon found out that, even though different from each other, they had many interests. I guess I just never gave love any chance at all. But it's nice to let it in. And so, Orly lived a pleasant life because she had evolved from the cold-hearted person she once was. She had learned that only by opening up to love and the little joys of life can one be the happiest. <laughs> <laughs>